Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem three from Leak Code Contest 83 entitled Consecutive Numbers Sum. The problem statement is very simple and it states, given a positive integer n, how many ways can we write it as a sum of consecutive positive integers? And note that n is between one and 10 to the ninth. So let's take a look at the examples that Leak Code provided us with. So here we have three examples. The first one, our input n is equal to five and our output, the answer should be two. And that's because we have two uh, consecutive sequences that sum to five. So the number itself is a sequence of length one, five, that satisfies this. And uh, there's a sequence of length two starting at two, uh, which is two plus three that uh, sums to five. For our second example, we have three, the number itself nine, uh, four plus five equals nine, and then two plus three plus four equals nine. And then our last example, 15, our output is four. So the number itself, eight plus seven is one uh, sequence, four plus five plus six is another sequence, and then one through five. So we're gonna focus on uh, the last example, and we are going to specifically focus on the sum four plus five plus six. So the first thing that I did uh, for this problem was to figure out a formula uh, to calculate the sum of a sequence uh, starting at a certain value and having a certain length. So uh, we know that a increasing series starting from one to n uh, can be calculated in constant time with the formula n times n plus one divided by two. However, our series or sequence isn't always gonna start at one, but we can still use this fact and extract out the increasing part from our sequence uh, starting at one. So four plus five plus six can be rewritten as one plus two plus three and then uh, extracting out a three from each of these numbers. So the way you can think of this is sort of in two components. We have the increasing part of the sequence and then we're extracting out a constant from each number. And if we just multiply this constant by the length of our sequence, and then also use this formula, we can get a formula for calculating the total sum of this sequence. So uh, the consecutive sum of a sequence with length j uh, starting from the value i is equal to i minus one times j uh, plus j times j uh, plus one divided by two. So this is this formula here, and the i minus one is just extracting out this value. So uh, here, so we're starting from the value four, so we would plug four in here to get three and then j is going to be three as well so it'll be three times three uh, plus uh, three times four divided by two and that will give us 15. So uh, using this formula, we then just have to loop over the possible values of i and j and check to see if at any point for uh, the combination of those values, uh, this is equal to our input value. And if we do it in such a way that we're not checking every single value, we sort of optimize the way we loop, uh, we'll be able to get a uh, uh, algorithm that solves this problem. So let's take a look at our code. Uh, I wasn't able to solve this in one attempt, but I'll take you through uh, the uh, attempts and the modifications modifications I made to my formula in order or my algorithm in order to make it pass. So this was the first attempt. It was pretty naive. So we're just declaring uh, an integer answer equal to zero. And then we have our first for loop and this is over the length of our sequences. So we're starting at a length of two. Uh, that's because we always know that a length of one is going to generate a uh, consecutive sequence uh, that sums to our answer. So we just account for that down here. So then we start uh, for j uh, equal to two and then we're gonna loop up to the length where uh, j times j plus one divided by two is always less than our input value n. So as soon as we have a sequence where uh, we know that's even starting from one, it's gonna be greater than n, the sum of that sequence, we don't need to loop anymore. And uh, then our second loop is basically trying to find the i that satisfies our formula uh, where we want t equal to n. So t here is just using our formula i minus one times j plus j times j plus one divided by two. And so we need to find a, a range and we want that range to be you know, pretty small uh, such that we are checking possible values for i. So we know there's only gonna be one possible value for i with each given j that will, that will satisfy this formula and have t equal to n. So it'll either be one or it'll be zero. And so the way uh, I, I set sort of the minimum and the maximum values is that I noticed uh, for a length uh, n, if you take your input and divide it by that uh, uh, value n, 
you will uh, get something pretty close to the middle of that sequence. So here we have a length of two and we're taking our input 15 divided by two and you get seven. Here our length is three, uh, you take 15 divided by three and you get five, that's right in the middle. And for our last one, uh, we have a length of five, 15 divided by five gives us three and that's right in the middle as well. So I figured if you just take uh, your input n, divide it by the length of your sequence j, and then do a plus or minus. So the minus is for the initial value and the plus is for the upper value. Um, and uh, then we are just initializing t in our uh, for loop as well. Uh, however, this will give you the correct answer, but it is going to time out. So my second solution was to realize that uh, here we're breaking out if uh, at any point t equals n, but also if at any point uh, t is greater than n, we can also stop looping. So I changed our sort of n condition here uh, from i less than n divided by j plus j to be uh, t less than n. And uh, because we have t less than n here, we can get rid of the break and uh, condense this into just one line. Um, this improves our solution, but it still ends up timing out. So the second improvement I made was noticing that for large values of j, uh, you can end up with a negative initial value for i. So uh, all you have to do is add a, a floor uh, of one to our initial value for i, and uh, this will improve your algorithm as well. Um, however, it still times out, and so my third uh, improvement to the solution was realizing that I should have never been subtracting j because the, then you end up with a range that is going to be uh, 2 times j. What you want is to subtract uh, j divided by 2. And once you do this, you end up with a passing solution. Uh, so probably not the optimal way to solve this problem, but uh, it does get you to the correct algorithm at the end of the day. And the time complexity for this solution is going to be roughly uh, big O of square root n, and that's because we have uh, j times j, which is going to be j squared less than n, which can be rearranged to uh, j less than the square root of n. And our inner loop, I believe, is uh, usually going to end up being pretty close to constant because uh, this uh, initial value for i is going to get us really close to uh, the value that we need to be able to satisfy this equation and if it doesn't end up satisfying it it's going to pretty quickly uh, t is going to exceed n so uh, we only really need to worry about the outside loop. So an alternative solution, which uh, I found in the discussion forum, uh, I think is much, much cleaner and much, much simpler. So it was uh, pointed out by a uh, contestant that with n consecutive in integers, uh, the first number we can form is 1 plus 2 uh, to end. To n and the next number we can form is 2 plus 3 plus n plus n plus 1 or 1 plus 2 plus uh, n plus n. So just adding an n to the initial uh, first number that we could have calculated. And then the next number after that is just uh, n added on to the previous number. Uh, so the point being here is that uh, for a given number input n uh, can be formed by n consecutive integers if the following is satisfied. So our input value n minus uh, 1 plus 2 plus n uh, modulo n is 0. So if this is satisfied then we know that uh, one of these cases, one of the numbers that we can form or sums that we can form with an uh, n consecutive integers is going to uh, uh, be able to sum to this value n. So we can just uh, use our form, our constant time formula to get this and we'll be able to use this to uh, code uh, an alternative solution. So the code for this is much simpler. We're initializing our answer to be zero and then we're just looping for the length of our sequences n uh, starting at two and then uh, having the same condition as our other formula and we just check if our input minus n times n plus 1 divided by 2 modulus n is equal to 0 and then do a post increment on our answer and of course having the same plus 1 condition for uh, sequences where n is just equal to 1 and the complexity of this uh, solution is going to be a big O of square root n for sure so thanks to Vlad for posting this solution on the discussion forum as always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.